Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, children. Good evening. Good evening, online students. Gayatri, Shriya, and Shiva Shankar. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Okay. So, what is coordinate geometry? Why coordinate geometry? Now, coordinate geometry is also referred to as the Cartesian system. One of you can shift here. No? Why do you want to like squeeze yourself in that bench? One of you can come here, or you can come to the first bench. Pass. Come to the first bench. Yeah. So coordinate geometry or the Cartesian system is used to describe the position of a point in a plane. Okay, coordinate geometry or the Cartesian system is used to define or is used to describe the position of a point in a plane. Now, like how how do we receive uh, postal communication? Every house has an address, right? Postal address. Every house has a postal address. And uh, that's how you receive postal communication from banks, from your friend, your relatives. Or if you uh, receive it uh, via the internet, you have an email ID. You have an email address. So if you have to receive a communication through post, you have a postal address, which is unique. OK, so no two houses can share the same address. In the same way, no two persons can have the same ID. So everyone has a unique. If you have one, you have a unique email ID, right? So in the same way, in geometry, if you need to define the position of a point, now supposing I place a point here. Yeah, I can say that this point with respect to this plane, this point is on the right top corner. But where exactly is it? Where exactly is it? Yeah, you can somewhat say that this point in this plane, so my uh, laptop screen or what you see on the board, okay? So that's the plane surface. The whiteboard is a plane surface and you see a point there. The laptop screen is a flat surface. It's a plane surface and I've marked a point here. Now, how do I uh, describe where this point is? So this point is uh, on the right top corner. Where is this point? Right top corner. Where is this point? All right, top corner. So which one are you talking about? Are you talking about point A, point B, point C? Which point? No. You so you're not able to. So there are so when there are more when there's more than one point, you know, in a position, you you cannot. Now when I say the point on the right top corner, so is it A, B, or C? No, you can't say particularly, right? That's the need for uh, coordinate geometry. So now when I divide this plane into four quadrants like this, when I divide this plane into four quadrants like this, and I mark, like you see the numbers on a number line, okay? Now we can give an address to every point. Now you can give an address to every point. You can give, an, you, you can give a unique address to every point. Now you can give a unique address to every point. So now this point A, okay? Six, what is this? One, two, three, one second. Okay. Okay, so six comma four. 
So this is the address of point A. Point A takes the address six comma four. So when you say six comma four, then it is point A. That's the address for point A. The address for point A in the Cartesian plane is six comma four. Like you have a unique email ID. Uh, the you know the house you live in has a unique postal address. The point A uh, on the Cartesian plane has a unique uh, you know ID. Unique address, which is six comma four. Point B. Point B is nine comma eight. Okay, what? About, okay, so because it's very rough, you know. So you say it's eight. Okay, fine, eight. I'm clumsy, so okay. So the point B. The point B is given by the address what? 8, comma 5. And what about point C? Point C, 8, comma 3, right? 8, comma 3. Address of point A, 6, comma 4. Address of point B, 8, comma 5. Address of point C, Eight comma three. Now this address is called an ordered pair. This address is called an ordered pair. It's like my voice is echoing. This is called ordered pair. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So this is called the, the address is called an ordered pair. Ordered pair because you can just say pair. No, why ordered pair? Because the order is important. Because the address six comma four is different from the address four comma six. Thank you. That's why ordered pair. Thank you. That's why ordered pair because you can just say pair. No, why ordered pair? Because the order is important. Pair because two numbers and ordered pair because the order is important. Now the address of point A is six comma four, and that order should be maintained. It is six comma four, not four comma six, because six comma four is different from four comma six. Which one is four comma six? Four, and write somewhere here, okay? Four comma six. This is four comma six, correct? Four and six here, right? Four comma six. Now, this is called the X. This is called the x-coordinate. This is called the y-coordinate. This is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. The horizontal line is called the x-axis. And the vertical line is called the y-axis. No, no, no. You're wrong. No, no, no. Don't mislead. No, no. You're wrong. X-axis is not called the abscess. Sir. Please wait. All right? So the need for uh, coordinate geometry or the Cartesian system is to give a unique address for every point lying on a plane surface. If you have to give an address, a unique address for every point lying on a plane surface, you need to take the help of coordinate geometry wherein you divide the plane into four quadrants. You divide the plane into four quadrants, which enables you to give a unique address for every point lying on the plane. The address is called an ordered pair because order uh, pair because two numbers. The address has two numbers, an ordered pair because the order is important. Okay. So this horizontal line is called the quiet. This horizontal line is called the x-axis. X-axis. And the vertical line is called the y-axis. Now the x-axis and the y-axis divide divide the Cartesian plane. This plane, the plane on which the x-axis and the y-axis lie is called the Cartesian plane. The plane on which the x-axis and the y-axis lie is called the Cartesian plane. Why Cartesian? It's a plane surface. Otherwise, it's just a plane surface. On the plane surface, if you show the x-axis and the y-axis, then the plane is called a Cartesian plane. Otherwise, it's just a, now this whiteboard is not a Cartesian plane. 
this white board without the x and y axis it's not a cartesian plane okay the top of the table it's just a plane surface that's not a cartesian plane the top of the table is just a plane surface it's a flat surface when is a plane surface or a flat surface uh you know referred to as the cartesian plane yeah when so the plane which contains the x axis and the y axis is called the cartesian plane okay and the x axis and the y axis divide divide the plane into four quadrants four quadrants this is called the first quadrant this is the second quadrant no no i don't want anybody to repeat third quadrant fourth quadrant first second third and fourth quadrant all right so in the first first quadrant see this okay now this is called the positive side of the x axis positive side of x axis this is the negative side this is the negative side of x axis all right now this is the positive side positive side of y axis this is the negative side of y axis now on the cartesian plane you know on the cartesian plane you not only find the four quadrants there are actually uh you know six six things in the cartesian plane you have the four quadrants you have the four quadrants and the x axis and the y axis what do you find in the cartesian plane you find the two axes the x axis the y axis and the four quadrants so there are six things in the cartesian plane there are six things in the cartesian plane there is the x axis there is the y axis and the four quadrants now yeah 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 okay so you understand this is the positive side of the x axis this is the negative side of the x axis positive side of the see you see positive side is the y axis negative side of the y axis we know all this right okay first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant fourth quadrant the order is important anti clockwise direction first second third fourth anti clockwise direction okay we cannot change this you cannot say this is the first second third and fourth quadrant no no, no. first second third fourth fixed okay <laughs> all right so here we have numbers 1 1 2 3 4 positive 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so on here negative 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 minus 8 minus 9 minus 10 minus 11 minus 12 minus 13 minus 14 minus 15 minus 16 minus 17 minus 18 minus 19 minus 20 minus 21 minus 22 minus 23 minus 24 minus 25 minus 26 minus 27 minus 28 minus 29 minus 30 minus 31 minus 32 minus 33 minus 34 minus 35 minus 36 minus 37 minus 38 minus 39 minus 40 minus 41 minus 42 minus 43 minus 44 minus 45 minus 46 minus 47 minus 48 minus 49 minus 50 minus 51 minus 52 minus 53 minus 54 minus 55 minus 56 minus 57 minus 58 minus 59 minus 60 minus 70 minus 71 minus 72 minus 73 minus 74 minus 75 minus 76 minus 77 minus 78 minus 79 minus 80 minus 81 minus 82 minus 83 minus 84 minus 85 minus 86 minus 87 minus 88 minus 89 minus 90 minus 91 minus 92 minus 93 minus 94 minus 95 minus 96 minus 97 minus 98 minus 99 minus 100 minus 101 minus 102 minus 103 minus 104 minus 105 minus 106 minus 107 minus 108 minus 109 minus 110 minus 111 minus 112 minus 113 minus 114 minus 115 minus 116 minus 117 minus 118 minus 119 minus 120 minus 121 minus 122 minus 123 minus 124 minus 125 minus 126 minus 127 minus 128 minus 129 minus 130 minus 131 minus 132 minus 133 minus 134 minus 135 minus 136 minus 137 minus 138 minus 139 minus 140 minus 141 minus 142 minus 143 minus 144 minus 145 minus 146 minus 147 minus 148 minus 149 minus 150 minus 161 minus 162 minus 163 minus 164 minus 165 minus 166 minus 167 minus 168 minus 169 minus 170 minus 171 minus 172 minus 173 minus 174 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 
2 comma 3 now what is this number 2 see here c2 look at this number 2 2 is the distance 2 is the distance of the point from the y axis see here this is 2 right this one is 2 what is that it's a distance from the y axis this is 2 units this one is 3 units see what i've marked there now what is 2 units 2 units is the distance of the point a from the y axis the perpendicular distance of the point a from the y axis is 2 units and the perpendicular distance of the point a from the x axis is 3 units the perpendicular distance of the point a from the y axis is 2 units and that's called the x coordinate x coordinate or the abscissa x coordinate or abscissa and the perpendicular distance of the point from the from the x axis is called the y coordinate or ordinate simply ordinate y coordinate or ordinate the x axis is not called abscissa the y axis is not called ordinate the x coordinate the x coordinate is called thank you sir the x coordinate is called the abscissa and the y coordinate is called the uh, ordinate right what is the x coordinate it is the perpendicular distance of a point from the y axis and what about the y coordinate perpendicular distance of the point from the x axis just a minute i have to make a call
Yeah, children. So what's the address of the point B? Seven comma seven comma five. Now, which is seven units? This one, right? Because this is seven. This is seven. This one is seven. So this is seven units. This is seven units. And this is five. So this is five units. It's a rectangle, right? Opposite sides are equal. So this is five, which means this is five units. This is five units. Now, what do you understand from this seven units? It's the perpendicular distance. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, children. So seven, seven units uh, represents the perpendicular distance of the point B from the Y axis. Five units represents the perpendicular distance of the point from the X axis. Yes or no? So seven, the first number, the first number represents. In the ordered pair, in the ordered pair, the first number represents the perpendicular distance of the point from the y axis. And in the ordered pair, the second number represents the perpendicular distance of the point from the x axis. OK, so the first number is called the x coordinate or abscissa. The second number is called the y coordinate or ordinate. X coordinate or abscissa, Y coordinate or ordinate. So, how do you spell abscissa? Like you spell scissor, you know, S C S C I S S O R, no, scissor. So, like that, S C I S S A, abscissa, abscissa, like scissor, abscissa. Okay. Okay. So x axis, y axis, the plural form. We say coordinate axis, ES. X axis, y axis, axis, x axis, y axis. Together, the x axis and the y axis, the x axis and the y axis together are called the coordinate axis. A X E S coordinate axis. All right. Now, what's the address of this point? This point. So, how do you write? So, how do you write the address of a point? You need to write the uh, distance of the point from the y axis first, and comma the distance of the point from the x axis. In which order do you write? You should first write the distance of the point from the y axis, then the distance of the point from the x axis. So what's the distance of this point from the y axis? One unit. From the x axis, it is on the x axis. So distance is zero. The point is on the x axis. So then what will be the distance of the point from the x axis? It is on the x axis. So distance is zero. What is the distance of this point from the y axis? From the y axis? From the y axis? One unit. What is the distance of the same point from the x axis? It is on the x axis. So its distance is zero. So how do you write the address of this point? Distance of the point from the y axis, one, comma, distance of the point from the x axis, zero. So that's why it's one, comma, zero. That's why it's one, comma, zero. Now see this point. This point. What is the distance of this point from the y axis? Y axis. See, supposing you're standing here, you'll have to walk and touch the y axis. If you're standing here, you'll have to walk and touch the y axis. You need to walk this distance, right? You need to go like this. And here you touch the y axis. 
So what's the distance of this point, this point from the y axis? Six units, six units. Now, if you want from the same point, if you want to touch the x axis, you're already on the x axis. You're already touching it. So what's the distance then? Zero. That's why the address of this point is six comma zero. So how do we write the address of a point? Distance of the point from the y axis, comma, distance of the point from the x axis. Distance of the point from the y axis, comma, distance of the point from the x axis. So distance of the point from the y axis is called the x coordinate. Distance of the point from the x axis is called the y coordinate. Opposite meaning x coordinate, distance from the y axis. Y coordinate, distance from the x axis. Yeah, what's the address of this point? Now distance, when we say distance, it is uh, positive. Whenever we say distance, it's positive. But we use negative numbers because uh, this, what is the distance of the point from the x-axis? Sorry, what's the distance of the point from the y-axis? Seven units. That's it. It's on the left side, right? So we say minus seven. It's on the left side, so minus seven. See. The distance of this point, the distance of this point from the y axis is not minus seven because distance is not negative. Distance is not negative. Distance on the right side, when we talk about the x axis, on the right side, positive uh, seven. On the left side, negative seven. When we talk, uh, you know, with respect to the y axis, if it's above, positive. If, if it's below, negative. So distance of this point from the y axis is seven units, but because the point is on the left side, we should write minus seven. OK, what to write first? What to write first? Distance from the y axis. Y axis is minus seven. The distance from the y, no, no, listen. Distance from the y axis is only seven units, but it's on the left side. No, so minus seven you should write. Comma, distance from the x axis, it's on the x-axis, so zero. Correct? What's the address of this point? So you must write the distance from the y-axis first. It is on the y-axis. What should you write first? Distance from the y-axis. Where is this point? It's on the y-axis. So what will be the distance from the y-axis? Zero. What's the distance of this point from the x axis? You should walk like this to touch the y axis. I'm sorry, to touch the x axis. Here you touch it. So, what's the distance we'll have to walk to touch the x axis? Six units. Right? Address of, address of this point. Distance from the y axis. Distance from the y axis, zero, because it's on the y axis. So distance from y axis, zero. Distance from x axis, yeah, x axis, you'll have to walk. You'll have to walk. You have to go like this and cover five units. But because it's below, we say minus five. So zero, comma, minus five. All right. So the point zero comma minus five is different from the point minus five comma zero. So x comma y is not equal to y comma x when x is not equal to y, but when x is equal to y, x comma y is equal to y comma x. When x is not equal to y, then x comma y is not equal to y comma x. When x is equal to y, then x comma y is equal to y comma x. So like 
x is not equal to y. So let's take an example. Uh, x is equal to minus 4 and y is equal to 7. So the ordered pair minus 4 comma 7. See, x is not equal to y, no? Take x and y take different values. X is not equal to y. So take different values for x and y. X minus 4, y 7. Okay, so the ordered pair minus 4 comma 7 is not equal to the ordered uh, pair uh, 7 comma minus 4. But when you take uh, same values for x and y, x is 5, y is also 5. Then 5 comma 5. Even if you change it, it's 5 comma 5. No, if you write x first and then y, 5 comma 5, y first and then x, 5 comma 5. So if x is, when x is equal to y, x comma y is equal to y comma x. When x is not equal to y, then the ordered pair x comma y is not equal to the ordered pair y comma x. Correct. <coughs> now I'm just passing so that you think about this. Got it? When x and y, when x is not equal to y, then x comma y is not equal to y comma x but when x is equal to y x comma y is equal to y comma x yes yes origin zero comma zero is address of the origin and uh, origin is a point right it's represented by the letter O. How do you represent a point using capital letters? How do you represent a point? A point is denoted using a capital letter. Six standard mathematics. A point is denoted using a capital letter. So the this point where the X axis and the Y axis meet is denoted by the letter capital letter O. And the address is 0, 0. O, 0, 0. O is the point, which is the origin, which is the place where the x axis and y axis meet. And the address of the point O is 0, 0. Yeah, now you can just read and help yourself go through all this. Don't write anything now, just read. Okay. In which answer this question? In which quadrant does the point four comma zero lie? In which quadrant does the point four comma zero lie? Correct. The point four. 
the point four comma zero does not lie in the first quadrant, then will the fourth quadrant not fight with you? If you say four comma zero lies in the first quadrant, then the fourth quadrant will fight with you. The point four comma zero does not lie in the first quadrant, does not lie in the fourth quadrant. It does not lie in any of the quadrants. It lies on the x-axis, on the positive side of the x-axis. Yes or no? Where did the point zero comma five lie? On the, on the y-axis. Does it lie in the first quadrant? No. Does it lie in the second quadrant? No. The point zero comma five does not lie in the first or the second quadrant. It lies on the y-axis. On the positive side of the y-axis. Where does the point four comma zero lie? On the positive side of the x-axis. Where does the point zero comma minus three lie? On the y-axis, on the negative side of the y-axis. And what about the point minus six comma zero? It lies on the x-axis, on the negative side of the x-axis. X-axis is enough. I'm just telling you in part, I mean very specifically on the negative side of the x-axis. Okay. So when you're given, you know, many points, you will be asked to identify where the points lie. OK, uh, if the points, uh, if the point lies on the first quadrant or the second quadrant or the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant or on the X axis or on the Y axis. So these are the six different positions we have in the Cartesian plane. OK, these are the six different positions you have in the Cartesian plane. Nothing beyond this. OK, so in the Cartesian plane, these are the six different positions. A point can lie in the first quadrant or in the second quadrant or in the third quadrant or in the fourth quadrant or on the X axis or on the Y axis. All right. Yeah, go through this. All right. Yeah, please read this one.
OK. So what is the X coordinate or the axis? It's the perpendicular distance of a point from the Y axis. What is the Y coordinate or the ordinate? It's the perpendicular distance of a point from the X axis. And how do you write the ordered pair? Perpendicular distance from the Y axis, comma, perpendicular distance from the X axis. OK, so you know this. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, for these notes, uh, you can just leave some space, children. If it's a long book, if you're using a long notebook, uh, just leave two sides of your long notebook. Leave two sides of your long notebook. OK, yeah, now answer these. Two sides, front and back. One page, yeah, one page. Two sides, meaning front and back. If you're using a long notebook, the small book you decide accordingly, maybe four uh, sides. So leave, uh, so the name of the chapter is uh, coordinate geometry. Leave four pages or uh, sorry, four sides or two sides accordingly. Now take down these statements and complete. Complete the statements, fill in the blanks. You need to copy. You need to write the statement. Yes. You can name any two points lying on the negative direction of the x-axis. Any two points. Do not write only the answer. Please write the statement and complete the statement. Fill in the blanks. Write the statement.
<lacht> ja? Kann man nicht? You can't be so judgmental just because uh, now we have started with fill in the blanks doesn't mean that the whole chapter is only, you know, of uh, fill in the blanks. We have different type of questions. Well, if you have completed till the seventh one, no? Okay.
okay done 1 to 10 1 to 10 done online children yes ma'am okay 1 to 8 okay we we'll see the answers from 1 to 8 student then finish from 1 to 6 you have completed okay we'll discuss the first six answers okay two points lying on the negative direction of the x axis are two points lying on the negative direction this is the negative direction of the x axis this is the negative direction of the x axis two points <clears throat> two points oh, two points so you must write minus 1 comma 0 ah minus 5 comma 0 Okay, yeah, anything minus one comma zero, minus two comma zero, minus three comma zero, minus one point five comma zero, minus five by four comma zero, whatever. Sorry, yeah, because it's a negative side of the x axis. <clears throat> yeah, what's the first number? What's the second number? The second number is what the perpendicular distance from the x axis. The point first, how do you write the ordered pair? First number, uh, comma, second number. What is the first number? The distance from the y axis, then distance from the x axis. The point is on the x axis. So, what will be the distance from the x axis? Zero. So, the second number is zero. The first number, distance from the y axis, distance from the y axis, this one, or this one, this one. Correct. So the points will be like minus one comma zero, minus ten comma zero. Right? Okay. So the two answers they're not fixed. It's not unique. It's not one answer. Like you can give different answers. The distance of a point from the y axis is called its x coordinate. X coordinate or Axis, x coordinate, x coordinate, or abscess, or abscess. You can correct it now if you were wrong. The distance of a point from the x-axis is called its y coordinate. Y coordinate, Y coordinate, or ordinate. Yeah, children, the, the coordinates of a point P on the X axis at a distance of four units to the left of the Y axis, to the left of the Y axis is. So, see here, okay, which is the left side of the Y axis? This one, this is the left side, right? This is the Y axis. This is the left side of the Y axis. This is the right side of the Y axis. Okay, 
the coordinates of a point P on the X axis. It's on the X axis and a distance of four units to the left of the Y axis. It's on the X axis and at a distance of four units to the left of the Y axis. So what will be the address of that point? P comma minus four. Minus four comma zero. Minus four comma zero. Minus four comma zero. See, it's like they've given you clues and you have to find the address of the point. They've given you some clues to find the address of the point. Now, where is the point P? It is on the X axis. Where is it? It's on the X axis. So what will be the second number? Zero. It's on the X axis. So the distance from the X axis is zero. That means the ordinate is zero. Now, what's the next clue? At a distance of four units to the left, to the left of the Y axis, distance is four units. So it should be minus four, right? The X coordinate is minus four. See, now I understand your doubt is what if the point is here? It's not there. It's on the X axis. The point is not here or here. It's here. Why? Because the point is on the X axis. And what is the uh, what is the distance of the point from the Y axis? Four units and to the left side. Left side means negative. Distance is four. So minus four. Minus four comma zero. Now with respect to the X axis, you say above and below. This region is above the X axis. Sanjay? This region is below the X axis. This is above the X axis. This is below the X axis. This one is left side of the Y axis. Right side of the Y axis. This is the Y axis. Right side, left side. This is the X axis above, below. Above the X axis, below the X axis. Left side of the Y axis, right side of the Y axis. When you say with respect to the Y axis, you must say right side, left side. When you say with respect to the X axis, you must say above the X axis, below the X axis. See, what are the two clues given? Again, going back to the fourth one. What are the two clues given? First clue, the point P is on the X axis. So it's here or here or here or here. It's on the X axis. So when it's on the X axis, you can find one, uh, you know, uh, you can find uh, meaning one of the two numbers, right? What can you find if it's on the X axis? Distance from the X axis is zero. That's the Y coordinate. So Y coordinate is zero. P, this one is zero. Now you should find the distance from the Y axis. You must find the distance from the Y axis at a distance of four units to the left of the Y axis. That means the distance from the Y axis is four, but it's on the left side. So minus four. I'm still not clear. Correct? Okay, so P is given by the address. Minus four comma zero. So what does zero indicate? Oh, I'm sorry, minus four comma zero indicate? Minus four comma zero means when the address looks like this, the point is on the X axis. It's on the X axis. And what's the distance of the point from the Y axis? Four units to the left. Okay, next one. The point minus two comma five lies in the second, second quadrant. quadrant. Second quadrant. The if x not e if x is not equal to y, then x comma y is not equal to y comma x. If x is equal to y, then x comma y is equal to y comma x. Correct. X comma y is equal to y comma x. The perpendicular distance of the point 7, 5 from the y axis is 
seven units seven units correct the coordinate of any point no not coordinate okay the coordinate of uh, it should be the coordinates one minute this uh, mistake is the coordinates of any point the coordinates of any point on the x axis is see coordinates means what sachin x coordinate and the y coordinate together coordinates means the x axis the x coordinate and the y coordinate together so the coordinates of any point on the x axis is x comma 0 it will be of the form it will be of the form something comma 0 You can even say a comma zero, b comma zero, c comma zero, but in general we say x comma zero. See the point lies on the uh, x-axis, so that means this is zero, right? This is zero. Now the first, that is the first number, can be anything. So x, you can even call it y, z, a, b, c, anything. So it's basically like, see what's the address of this point one comma zero this one two comma zero this one three comma zero. So how does the address of any point on the x-axis look like? Some number comma zero. Look at the points on the x-axis. What about this minus one comma zero? What about this minus four comma zero? So what do you observe? Any number, sorry, any point on the x-axis. is of the form some number comma zero some number right that is x you can even write a b c d but in general we say x x comma like in textbooks we'll find x x comma zero so in general any point on the y axis will be of the form y axis no now this one will be zero comma three this one will be zero comma minus four So in general, any point on the y-axis will be of the form zero comma y, zero comma y, because it will be zero comma some number. So you can say zero comma a, zero comma b, zero comma c, zero comma d, zero comma b, or uh, whatever. But in general, zero comma y. Commonly found in textbooks is zero comma y. So x comma zero, zero comma y. A point lying on the x-axis will be of the form x comma zero. A point lying on the y-axis will be of the form zero comma y. Zero comma some number. Okay. The coordinates of the point that lie in the fourth quadrant will be of the form a comma minus b. Fourth quadrant. A comma minus B. Minus B. X comma A. minus Y. Yeah, or A comma minus B. Fourth quadrant. Fourth quadrant. This is the fourth quadrant. What will be the address of this point? Will be the address of this point. This point, three comma minus three. It's of the form a comma minus b or x comma minus y. Correct. Take any point in the fourth quadrant and write the address, three comma minus three. Take any point. If you take this point, this one, this one will be one. Comma minus three. One comma minus three. So it'll always be of the form a comma minus b or x comma minus y. The coordinates of the origin is zero comma zero. O given by the address zero comma zero. A point is represented using a capital letter. So origin capital letter O. Address zero comma zero. Okay, continue. I'll show the answers. It's on the next slide. Just in case you have not uh, taken note of any answer, 
don't worry it's on the next slide i'll present it for you now continue I'll be right on all the statements quickly. Taking a long time. Copy all the statements fast. Yeah, which one do you want? Twelve. Mom. Yeah. Mom, can you show seventeen questions? Yeah.
Rahul, which one are you doing? 14. Eighteen, then the new point will lie in the dash quadrant then the new point will lie in the dash quadrant Answer all. Okay. Hmm. Taken all the statements. So, Sachin, which one are you writing? 19. Okay. Finish, Anita. Answer all 19. Okay, okay. You have taken all the 19 statements, uh, Divitri. What about you? Ashwiti, uh, complete it. Yourself also done. Taken all the statements, boys? 17. Take on. Rahul and uh, Sanjay? 19. Okay, Rahul? 1 6, huh? 
What's your name? Hari Darshan. Yeah, Hari Darshan. Taken all. Next one. Uh, suddenly, you know, I'm like Surya. Uh, 18. And Sachin. Done all 19. Okay. I think we stopped at uh, the, the tenth one. Now the eleventh one. The point at which uh, the two coordinate axes axes. See here the plural. The point at which the two coordinate axes, that is the x axis and the y axis, meet is called the Origin. origin very good it's called the origin the point if the point 2 comma 0 minus 6 comma 0 3 comma a minus 3 lie on the x-axis then the value of a is 3. the value of a should be 3 because this point this point lies on the x-axis so let's see how uh, you know, a point on the x-axis looks like. So this is 1 comma 0. This is 2 comma 0. This is minus 1 comma 0. So that means this y coordinate should be 0. A minus 3 should be 0. That means the value of A is equal to 3. What is C given by? C is equal to 3 comma A minus 3. Now where does the point C lie? It lies on the x-axis. Then what should be the y-coordinate? Zero. But what is it? A minus three. But it should be zero. Then what should be the value of A? Three. Then only it be three minus three, zero. Three minus three, zero. If you want to work, you should say the y-coordinate A minus three is equal to zero. A minus three is equal to zero. On working that, you get A is equal to three. So the value of A is three. What is the y coordinate of the point C? What is the y coordinate of the point C? A minus 3. A minus 3. But what should be the y coordinate of a point on the x axis? 0. If the point lies on the x axis, the y coordinate should be 0. But what is the y coordinate here? A minus 3. That means a minus c should be 0. On solving this, a is equal to 3. So the value of a is 3. The axis of all the points on the y-axis is y-axis, okay? So this is 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, minus 1, 0, minus 2. So the abscissa is nothing but the x-coordinate. So the abscissa of all the points on the y-axis is 0, 0. The coordinates of a point whose ordinate is 6 and which lies on the y-axis is, what do you mean by ordinate? Y-coordinate. Y-coordinate is 6. 0, 6. Why 0, 6? Because the point lies on the y-axis. The point lies... The, yeah, so the clues are given to you. The You should write the coordinates of one... There's a point. You should write the coordinates of that point. That is, you should write the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. You must write the coordinates, meaning you should write the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. It's given that the y coordinate is 6. So, see, we have two dashes, right? Now, this dash, this is 6. And it lies on the y axis. 
if it lies on the y axis, we know that the first dash is zero. The first dash is zero. See, so the point is zero comma six. Zero comma six. The coordinates of a point which is the coordinates of a point which is seven units. Okay, away from the x axis, seven units away from the x axis and lies on the negative direction of the y axis is. Where, the, where does the point lie? It lies on the negative direction. So it's here. It lies on the ne negative direction of the y axis here. And uh, it is seven units away from the x axis. Seven units away. Here, the coordinates of a point which is seven units away from the x axis. So seven units away from the x axis can be above or below. Seven units away from the x axis can be above or below, but it's given lies on the negative direction of the y axis. And seven units away. So then this marking is minus seven. This marking is minus seven. And the point is given by the address 0, comma minus 7. It lies on, on the y-axis it lies. It lies on the y-axis in the ne negative direction. <coughs> Where's the point? On the y-axis. Negative side of the y-axis. And uh, with respect to the y-axis it is seven units away. So this marking will be seven minus seven. So what will be the address of this point? Zero comma minus seven. Zero comma minus seven. The point three comma minus five lies in the, this is Sachin tell us, first one is plus comma, plus plus. Plus second one. No, no, Sachin, Sachin. Minus, comma, plus. Third one. Minus, minus. Fourth one. Plus, minus, right? Okay, very good. So the point three, comma, minus five. Plus, minus. Plus three, minus five. Plus, minus. Plus, minus. Second quadrant. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm like colorblind. I'm like, I'm seeing it and I'm writing it incorrectly. I'm sorry. The point uh, 3, comma minus 5. So plus minus, plus minus is here, fourth quadrant. Sorry, fourth quadrant. And the point minus 5, comma 3. Minus and plus, minus 5, plus 3. Lies in the second quadrant. Minus plus lies in the second quadrant. Minus five plus three. So minus plus second quadrant. A point minus x comma y lies in the second quadrant. Yeah, minus x plus y will lie in the second quadrant. If the signs of x and y are interchanged, so that means it will be x comma minus y, right? Then the new point will lie in the dash quadrant. Okay, so minus x comma y, if it is, if the signs are interchanged, so that is x comma minus y, then lie in the fourth quadrant. The points 3 comma 0 and minus 3 comma 0 lie on the x axis. X axis. The point in which the abscissa and ordinate have different signs. Okay, the point in the point in which abscissa and ordinate have different signs will lie in the second, second and second, fourth. It should be uh, or second quadrant or fourth quadrant. Okay, it's given second and fourth quadrants. Okay, correct, correct. Second and fourth quadrants. Second and fourth quadrants. Okay, now I'm just pressing the answers, right? Yeah. 
yeah please uh, you can make a note of all the answers or if you have not checked you can check it now Zoom C from the beginning. Correct. Please check all of you. Sorry. Yeah. Done, children? Yes,
Ja. Yeah. Uh, what you can do is you can just. Uh, I just no, no, I'll tell you. I'll just tell you something this way. I don't. One second, I'm just helping. Just a second. Yeah. <laughs> So since this is going to be common for all, you know, just make a note of this assertion. Give the heading assertion reason type questions options. These will be the four options for all the questions for all the assertion reason statements. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Open your book fast. Write on this. Assertion reason type questions. Don't waste time. Kindly write down whatever you see on the board. I'll give you the further instructions. I've prepared questions from many books. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now write question number one. Now you write question number one and write only till here. Don't copy the options. Options are the same for all. So everywhere write only the questions, write only these two statements. Understand? Question number three, write only these two statements, the assertion and reason statement. Question number four, write only the assertion and reason statements. And uh, for the answer, just write option A, option B. And you can refer to this one. What is option A? You can refer here, option B. Do you understand me? 
Okay. Yeah, now assertion. The points A, 6, comma, I'll do, we'll do the first one together. The rest of it, you're going to do it by yourself. The, so the first statement is the assertion statement. It says the points, by points, the point, sorry, okay, the point A, 6, comma, minus 4 lies in the fourth quadrant. Okay, I don't know. 6, comma, minus 4, 6, minus 4. Yes, it does lie in the fourth quadrant, correct? 6, minus 4. Yes, it lies in the fourth quadrant, correct. So assertion is true. Okay. Assertion is true, correct? The assertion statement is true. Reason statement. The signs of points in the first, sorry, the signs of points in quadrants 1, 2, 3, 4 are plus, plus, correct, minus, plus, correct, minus, minus, correct, and plus, minus, correct. Correct. Now, what is what is in the assertion statement? The assertion state. What is in the assertion statement that the point six comma minus four lies in the fourth quadrant? Okay. And how do you identify that? Based on the signs. Based on the signs, you identify that. Uh, plus comma minus so fourth quadrant. Yes or no? The point A six comma minus four lies in the fourth quadrant. It's True, the statement is true, but how do you make out that? Because it's plus comma minus, so it lies in the fourth quadrant. Okay. Now, what is the reason statement talking about? The reason statement is talking about the assertion statement only, right? In the assertion, we have six comma minus four lies in the fourth quadrant, and the reason is also regarding the assertion statement that the signs in the different quadrants are whatever. So, is the reason statement talking about the assertion statement? Or is it talking about something else? Now, supposing the reason statement was uh, uh, origin is the point where the x axis and the y axis meet. True. True, but reason is true. Sorry, assertion is true, reason is true. But the reason is not talking about the assertion statement. Or the reason is not an explanation for the assertion statement. Let's take the assertion statement as it is. I'll just change the reason statement. Let's say the reason statement is origin is the point where the x axis and the y axis meet. Is it true or false? It's true. The reason is true. The reason statement is true. Yes, origin is the point where the x axis and y axis meet true. So the assertion statement is true. The reason statement is also true. But the reason is not the correct explanation for the assertion statement. Why? It's talking about something else irrelevant to the assertion statement. But here, assertion is true, reason is also true, and the reason is closely linked with the assertion statement. The reason is closely linked with the assertion statement. So the correct option is <clears throat> both A and R are true, and R is the correct explanation of A. Do we understand that? Do we get that? No, if you have a difference in opinion, please ask me now. Don't carry it forward. Ask me now. True, all of you understand. This is true, this is true, all of you understand. Now, so true means you have only these. Listen, listen, no, please. True means you have only, you have to choose only between A and B. Because here it is A true, B for, uh, sorry, A true, R false. Here it is A false, R true. So it is not C or D. Because in C and D, one is true, the other is false. But for us, both are true. For us, both are true. But in C and D, one true, one false. One true, other false. So for us, we have to choose between the options A or B. A or B. So is R the correct explanation of A? Or is R not the correct explanation of A? So here it is, R is the correct explanation for A. Because R is talking about what is spoken in A. Or R is talking about what is mentioned in A. So, 
A and R are true. R is the correct explanation of A. So answer right option A. Just write answer option A. Answer option A. Finished? Okay. Right, children. So how do we understand the options? Uh, in option A and B, both A and R are true. In option A and option B, both A and R are true. In option A, R is the correct explanation for A. In option B, R is not the correct explanation for A. In option C and D, one is true while the other is false. One true, other is false in option C and D. In A and B, both are true. You understand? Okay. Okay.
the point which lies on the line, we'll have to read it, you know, uh, slowly. Just a second. Yeah. The point which lies on the line, y is equal to 3x. Okay, so line, Cartesian plane. Okay, so there's, so say, a line like this or a line like whatever, like this. And, you know, when we see a line, there are infinitely many points lying on the line. When we see a line, there are infinitely many points lying on the line. The point which lies on the line. Now, every line, you know, every line is given by a linear equation. When, when you're learning something new, when you're learning something, when you're hearing something for the first time, you need to believe that when you, you know, like look into it again and again, you can retain it. And don't, you know, like assume that it's, it's difficult. Anything new is difficult. But when you repeat, when you see the same thing two, three times, then it becomes easy. Now, this is the x-axis, right? This is the x-axis, right? Now, tell me, this point is 1, 0. What about this? 2, 0. What about this one? Minus 1, 0. What about this one? Minus 2, 0. So, you know, what is the... E now, x-axis is a line. The x-axis is a line. And I just told you that every line is given by a linear equation. A linear equation. Every line is given by a simple equation. Simple equation. Seven standard. Simple equation. Every line is given by a linear equation. All right. Now we're going to see the equation of this line, which is the x-axis. What do you observe? y is 0, right? So y is equal to 0 is the equation of the x-axis. y is equal to 0. Now y is equal to 0 is an equation, right? Because if you can see the equal to sign. If you see an equal to sign, it's an equation. And what's the equation? y is equal to 0. Why did you write y is equal to 0? Because y is always 0. <laughs> because on the x-axis, when you mark off a couple of points on the x-axis, we observe that the y-coordinate, y-value is always 0. So y is equal to 0 is the equation of the x-axis. Now let's see the equation of the y-axis. Let's mark a couple of points on the y-axis. What do you see? The y-value changes. y is 1, y is 2, y is minus 3. The y-value changes. Okay. But the x value is always 0. x is always 0. See, on the x-axis, on the x-axis, the x value is, the x value keeps changing. Minus 2, minus 1, 1, 2. The x value keeps changing. The y value is a constant. y is equal to 0. On the y-axis, we see that the y coordinate that changes to 1, minus 3. But what is fixed? The x coordinate is fixed. It's always 0. So x is equal to 0. x is equal to 0 meaning the x-coordinate. x is equal to 0. The x-coordinate is always 0. x is equal to 0 is the equation of the y-axis. So you cannot say I forgot or I got confused and I exchanged the two. For this I wrote that, for that I wrote this. <laughs> you cannot say that because you can always check. You can always check like this. You can just quickly uh, draw the two lines, the horizontal and the vertical lines uh, in the rough column. Just quickly mark some points and you can identify yourself. So we just understood the equation of the x-axis and the y-axis. So it's just the opposite. The equation of the x-axis, y is equal to 0. Equation of the y-axis, x is equal to 0. It's like you're disagreeing always. 
if they ask you the equation of the x axis, you say y is equal to 0. And equation of the y axis, x is equal to 0. Easy to remember. OK. <clears throat> now let's understand the equation of a line parallel to the x axis. Equation of a line parallel to the x axis. We need to have some patience. OK, parallel to the x axis. It can be above or below like this. Above, this is below. This is the x axis. We're trying to understand the equation of a line parallel to the x axis. Parallel to the x axis. Okay, let's take the, let's just mark some points. This will be what? Tell me the address of this point. One comma. This is say one and say this is uh, some four. So it'll be. One comma four. What about this one? Two comma four. What about this one? Three comma four. What about this one? What about this one? What about this one? What do you observe? Four, 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 four. Everywhere four. Who's four? Why is four? Why is always four? So y is equal to 4, listen to me carefully, y is equal to 4 is the equation of a line parallel to the x-axis at a distance of 4 units above it. y is equal to 4. Why y is equal to 4? Because the y-coordinate is 4 everywhere. The y-coordinate is 4 everywhere. The y-coordinate everywhere is 4. So y is equal to 4. Now. Now we'll have to talk on y is equal to 4. A topic is given to you now. Say something about it. Y is equal to 4. Y is equal to 4 is a, is, is a line parallel to the x-axis. Y is equal to 4 is a line parallel to the x-axis. Okay, parallel to the x-axis, okay. Above or below? So y is equal to 4 is a line parallel to the x-axis at a distance of 4 units above it. See, you'll have to say three things, okay. You'll have to mention three things. It's parallel to which one? Parallel to the x-axis. Okay. Then where is it? Is it above or below? It's above. Now the distance, okay, it is above. How high is it? Where above? Where above? Four units above. So what are the parameters? Parallel to which axis? Parallel to the x-axis. Above or below? Because parallel to x-axis means you must say above or below. Above or below? Above. Okay, above. How much above? Four units above. So y is equal to four. Is the equation of a line parallel to the x-axis at a distance of four units above it? Now let's take this line. Okay, so this will be, now say this is like minus five. Minus five. So this is uh, 1 comma minus 5. This is some uh, 4 comma minus 5. This is like 2 comma minus 5. Oh, sorry, minus 2 comma minus 5. Minus 2 comma minus 5. All right? Correct? Okay. So this line, which is below the x-axis, it's parallel to the, this line is parallel to the x-axis. It's below it. And what we see is, what, sorry, what we see is, there is uh, this value minus 5, which is a constant. Minus 5, minus 5, minus 5. Everywhere we see minus 5. And who is minus 5? Y is equal to minus 5. Y is equal to minus 5. Is a, sorry. Y is equal to minus 5 is the equation of this line. This line, no? Its equation is Y is equal to minus 5. So where is it located? y is equal to minus 5 is the equation of a line parallel to the x-axis at a distance of 5 units below it. Parallel to which axis? x-axis. Above or below? Below. Distance 5 units. So when we say y is equal to, it's parallel to the x-axis. When we say x is equal to, it will be parallel to the y-axis. 
everywhere opposite. Everywhere it's the opposite. When we say, when see when, when you're given y is equal to four. See now with y is equal with okay y is equal to fourteen. You can say three things. Y is equal to fourteen. Is the equation of a line parallel to the x-axis because y is equal to no. So it's the equation of a line parallel to the x-axis. Above or below? It's a positive fourteen. So above. Distance fourteen units. Y is equal to minus nine. This is the equation of a line parallel to the x-axis because y is equal to no. So it's parallel to the x-axis. It's parallel to the x-axis above or below? Below. So it's negative. So below. Distance nine minutes. Nine minutes. Distance nine minutes. I like my, he can come and wait. No. And the light and sand port of London. It's on the walls. Okay. Yeah. So y is equal to minus nine. So y is equal to means parallel to the x axis. Neg minus. So below, below the x axis. And the nine is the distance at a distance of nine units below it. Is that fine? I will quickly see uh, for the x axis. Sorry, for the. For lines parallel to the y axis. Now this is a line parallel to the y axis. This is a line parallel to the y axis. Let's mark some points. So this say this is six. This is say six. So this will be like six comma one. This will be like six comma two. And this one will say like six comma minus minus three something like that. Okay, minus three. Well, we have taken a line parallel to the x. This is the x axis. This is the x axis. So we have taken a line parallel to the x axis. OK, so we have taken a line parallel to the x axis. We have marked some points on the x axis. We have marked some points on this line parallel to the x axis. 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, minus 3. Now what is fixed? What is fixed? 6 is fixed. 2 is 6, x is 6, x is 6. That's all, we got it. x is equal to 6. x is equal to 6 is the equation of this line, which is parallel to the y-axis and at a distance of 6 units to the right of the y-axis. Now you should not say above, below. Right of the y-axis. x is equal to 6. Is the equation of a line? Are we all internalizing what I'm saying? Yes. X is equal to six. Got it? Okay. What is it? It's a. It's the equation of a line parallel to the y-axis. To the left or right? To the right of the y-axis. And what's the distance? Six units. So x is equal to see when it is x is equal to it's parallel to the y axis. X is equal to is parallel to the y axis. X is equal to six is the equation of a line parallel to the y axis at a distance of six units to the right of it because positiveness or right. If it's negative, it's left. Take this line. Parallel to the y axis. It's parallel to the y axis. Now let me see. This is say some minus seven. Okay, minus seven. So this point will be minus seven comma one. This will be minus seven comma two, and below say minus seven comma six. Correct. Yes. Minus seven minus four. Have I marked it correctly? Yes. Minus seven minus four below, and above it is minus seven one minus seven two. Okay. So what is fixed? Minus seven is fixed. Minus seven is fixed. All right. And who is minus seven? X coordinate. X is equal to minus seven. 
x is equal to minus 7. So x is equal to minus 7 is the equation of a line parallel to the y-axis at a distance of 7 units to the left of it. X is equal to means parallel to the y-axis. Y is equal to means parallel to the x-axis. So x is equal to minus 7 is a line parallel to the y-axis at a distance of 7 units to the left of it. So in general, we say x is equal to a, y is equal to b. x is equal to a parallel to the y-axis. y is equal to b parallel to the x-axis. We'll just finish this and wind up the class for today. The point, <clears throat> the point which lies on the line y is equal to 3x, having abscess at 2. Abscess at 2 meaning what? X is equal to 2. X is equal to 2. Then what will be y value? Y is equal to 3 into 2. Y is equal to 6. So what will be the point? Y is equal to 6. If x is 2 and y is 6, yeah, the point is 2, 6. Because you should write x value first and then the y value. X is given 2, abscess are 2, X is 2. And what is Y? It's given here. Y is equal to 3X is given. So Y is equal to 3 into 2. 6. Okay, so 2 comma 6. Okay. So the point which lies on the line uh, Y is equal to 3X having abscess are 2 is 2 comma 6. Yeah, correct. Yes or no, children? Correct, no? Everything is abscess as 2 means what? The x coordinate is 2. So correct, x coordinate is 2. And what's the y coordinate? 6. Yeah, what is y? y is 3 into 2. 6. Correct. So this one is true. This is true. A, a line parallel to the x-axis. Now one minute. y is equal to 3x. When you say y is equal to 3x, y is equal to something. Is the line parallel to the x-axis? y is equal to a number y is equal to a number is a line parallel to the x axis and i'm just okay i'll do one thing we'll just finish it in the next class because i have to say a couple of things i don't want you to get confused now this is true children this is true all right now a line parallel to the x axis is y is equal to k Y is equal to K. I said Y is equal to B. You remember? You can use any letter. Nothing like it should be B only. You can say Y is equal to C, Y is equal to D. But in books, you will find X is equal to A, Y is equal to B. That's what I try to say. Okay. So a line parallel to the X axis is Y is equal to K. Correct. Parallel to X axis means Y is equal to something. Y is equal to K. Yeah, correct. Okay, so both are true, but we need to understand one more part, which I will take some time to explain. So we'll complete this in the next class. Both the statements are true. Both are true, but we have to see if it's option A or op option B. We'll do that in the next class. All right? All right, online children, Jayan, Shriya, Gayatri, Harsha, and Shiv Shankar. That's it for today's session. Thank you so much. You may leave the call. Good night. Yeah, thank, thank you, children. Goodness. Good night.